So we just got finished looking at John 3.16. How ridiculous it is. The phrase should not perish, which is in the aorist tense, a completed action. Hence, a permanent state of not perishing. This would not make no sense if I only, admit, only meant for an age. You're absolutely totally not going to perish. The door is locked to that. And you'll live for an age. Yeah, maybe a month or two. Whatever the age is. Really, doesn't make any sense, obviously. You can ridicule it because it is ridiculous. Take a look at 2 Corinthians 5.1. For we know that if our, our believers, earthly house, their physical bodies, of this tabernacle, our physical bodies of this tabernacle were dissolved, destroyed, we have a building of God. What do you think? It's temporary. It could be destroyed. But we have a building of God that's only going to last a little bit longer. And house not made with hands, not made with so that it won't last, but eternal, Ionian in the heavens. So you got, ah, you had a, your, you're going to lose your body, your physical body, but you'll get another one, and it'll last, well, a little bit longer. If the body of a believer becomes immortal, 1 Corinthians 15, 53, then it becomes eternal, Ionian, 2 Corinthians 5, 1. But it, because it cannot be immortal without being eternal. Therefore, Ionian equals eternal. Here's your case. If this and this is true, then therefore it has to be an eternal. Hebrews 9.14, how much more to the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, Ionian pneumatus, offered himself without spot to God. The context here demands Ionian equals eternal. How long does the spirit last? Well, just for a while until he complete this task, there would be absolutely no reason to translate pneumatos, Ionian, to mean spirit of the age. If that were the case, by changing words to begin with, you can't change words in the Word of God, yet they do. And then they go further and they have their own dictionary to show you what words mean in the Bible. They only mean one thing that they say it means and nothing else. And they don't go by dictionaries, they've made their own dictionary up. Grammar indicates that Ionian is an adjective which modifies pneumatos. There is no genitive case and or no preposition of included in the grammar so that Ionian could be translated of the age <coughs> in the above verse. Of course, they, they'll go ahead and add it up. And then people who belong to that, they have to use their own translation. They're not allowed to check it with anything else. Since Ionian also carries no definite article in this passage, nor satisfies grammatical rules, which would then make it a noun, it therefore cannot be translated the age or the ages. Since God, the Holy Spirit, is not limited to just an age in his existence, the word Ionian must be translated eternal because God is eternal and not temporary or temporal. Note that this is a legitimate a point because the word Ionian has a legitimate and most common usage and translation of eternal from ancient times when the Bible was written. Go back to extra-biblical writings. When you have something, uh, that word in it, uh, something there, you read it doesn't mean of the ages. It means eternal. In other words, if the word Ionius has always been used to mean eternal by the people that use the language when the Bible was written on up to even today, then it is legitimate to conclude that this is the correct meaning when found in Scripture, providing it does not violate the context, which it certainly does not. People make this common mistake. Dictionaries don't tell you what words mean that they've established mean. The dictionaries reflect how words are used. I don't know how many people think that, even people who have the doctrines correct and in order. They think, well, yeah, but Noah Webster invented this meaning of this word. No, Noah Webster reported a new meaning for a particular word because people were using it in that new way. A certain number of people have to be caught doing that, not just a small little area, but a whole region or a whole country. And that's how dictionaries are compiled. They observe how words are used. Luke 1.33, <clears throat> and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, Aistus Ionius, into the ages, idiomatic expression, forever, <clears throat> and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Uc estai telos, shall be an end, not shall be an end. In order to make sense in this passage, the word Ionius must again be translated to the most common usage of forever or for eternity in order to coincide with a parallel passage phrase which immediately follows which states there shall be no end. It makes no sense to insist that Ionas is always limited to the translation usage of the ages or age. 
and he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ages, and his kingdom shall there shall be no end. So, you know, he's going to be fired from his house, his reign over the house of Jacob, but he'll still have his kingdom. You know, it's just dumb. Either our Lord's kingdom is for ages, or it is forever with no end. Second Peter 2, 1, 11. For an, so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting Ionian kingdom. Ionian is an adjective here. It modifies kingdom. So if the kingdom of Jesus Christ shall have no end, then it must be everlasting. Yay! Hence, Ionian means everlasting. If tan Ionius teos means God of the ages, and it does not, then the word Ionius must be a noun. It is not. The word Ionius is an adjective in the above passages, not a noun. Examples of the biblical use of the noun are as follows. <clears throat> and God raised us up with the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages... Okay, and that's legitimate. He might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now let's see how that works. In the coming ages, ein tois, that's a definite article, in the Iosin, tos epochomis, in the ages that are coming. And there it means ages. There you go. Proper use, language, context, and logic. <clears throat> now we have a whole bunch of dictionaries, because I argued with this guy online, and I actually talked to him on the telephone, and he's just adamant. He's got the dictionaries, and you say, all oh, your dictionaries, we've got dictionaries that prove our case. Turns out those dictionaries were fabricated by the very uh, New World Translation they wanted to establish the meanings of the words for in their own way. Well, you can do that all you want, and Webster's will go along with you. Just find about another billion or two or three billion that use it your way. And we'll establish that. But so far, nobody's going along with your plan. But you can't make up a dictionary that reflects usage when there isn't the usage. <clears throat> I mean, a couple of people use it that way, but not tens of millions or billions. Here's all these dictionaries. Thayer's, Hog and Vine. How can you go? These are used by billions of Kittle, Gerhard, and Friedrich. Little, H.G., and Scott. All these dictionaries. How do you miss that? And then we have classical Greek. The classical Greek here. Plato. Remember Plato? He didn't use it the Jehovah Witness way. Aristotle. Remember him? Philo. you got to ignore all these people and the way they use these words. Classical Greek. Koine, common, everyday Greek. We have certain things like uh, classical English and uh, common everyday English, slang, those kinds of things. All these things. A plethora of evidence. That's what you need to do. So an accusation, by the way, takes one sentence. And the proof and the defense of your point of view against that accusation takes a long time. I have a lifeguard that's talking to me about uh, a particular author and whether or not he's biblical. And so I spent 315 pages worth of time and effort to, to uh, show how this author is not biblical. And the lifeguard didn't read one thing. He said, I think this guy is a pretty good author. Let me know. I did. Did he read one word? No. But it uh, won't go unnoticed because I posted on my website. And this is a popular uh, author, uh, author. So Michael Heiser. <clears throat> 